Hello everybody, this is Gertrude Mache here in beautiful Wellington, New Zealand. This is the last day of the Best of You Expo. And I first of all want to thank the organizers, Bernardo, for what you have done for all of us as speakers around the world. I came on this platform with 21 other women. We have had a phenomenal week. And we are truly, truly grateful to be able to speak from this platform. My present presentation today is called How to Land Your First TED Talk by Speaking from the Heart. My first TED Talk opportunity came when I was presenting at a human rights event that Wellington City Council had organized. And at that event, I had just published my first book. and. I read this poem, I'm going to share it with you now. The poem is entitled, Beloved Africa. Beloved Africa, as I run from your shores, my heart is filled with sores. Open wounds from rapidly closing doors. I shall miss the sunshine, the warm rain, the thunderstorms, the plains. I shall long for sun-kissed mangoes, overripe bananas, and the sweet, sweet taste of watermelons on a hot summer's day. Blue skies and green cornfields with healthy yields, crimson sunsets, and bright white smiles that flow for miles. And though I leave you, I will forever be your messenger. I am your ambassador to the world. Mama Africa, from your womb I leave, through your warmth, your pain, you birthed me. And deep, deep down within my soul, I know I am. I am a child of Africa. Blue skies, wide open fields, rumbling hills and waterfalls, your memory will forever be etched in my soul as I compose this sweet, sweet melody to my beloved Africa. I had a standing ovation at this event. I was very, very raw and very emotional because I've been in New Zealand for 20 years and boy, I miss home. I miss Africa every single day. I miss my family. I miss my friends. I miss my culture. I got to a point where not hearing your own language spoken on a daily basis, you feel like you're going to go crazy. For 20 years, I'm asked almost every single day where I'm from. Although I'm a Kiwi, I tell people I'm from New Zealand, they still say, but where are you from? So I still don't feel like I belong. The mayor of Wellington heard me speak and she came up to me and asked me where I got the poem from. And I told her it was from my first book that I was going to publish that month. And she asked if she could launch my book launch. So I was hosted by Wellington City Council in the mayor's chambers. And it was one of the most incredible opportunities of my life. I became friends with the mayor. I could literally go to the mayor's office without an appointment and go and have tea or coffee with her. And she became a mentor, she became a coach. When Wellington City Council was having their first TED event, guess who nominated me? It was the mayor of Wellington. Why am I telling you the story? Sometimes golden opportunities show up when you volunteer, when you give without expecting anything in return. I had been working with the city council on the Wellington City Council's ethnic forum. I was helping with the refugee service. I was very active in our community. And I became visible because of that. And so I did my first TED talk. I was totally unprepared. 
it came off really well. I again had a standing ovation, but I didn't quite understand how to get my idea worth spreading out. So Ted's tagline is ideas worth spreading. So if you're given doing a TED talk, you have 15 minutes to take people from the beginning to the end of your journey with one common thread that binds the presentation together. I then looked for a coach because I started getting a lot of speaking opportunities when I did the first TED talk. TED will give you credibility. TED will make you visible. It doesn't matter if you are invited to speak in a room with 10 people, so long as it has the TED branding, when that video goes online, you are now speaking to millions of people. And so I got myself a coach and he said to me, Gertrude, your story is amazing. You've done so many things to help your community back home in Africa. You feel like a legend or a myth. You don't feel like a real human being. <laughs> he said, tell me about the things that have gone wrong in your life. And so I started sharing the things gone wrong. I started sharing about how I would go back to Zimbabwe now with this Western perspective on how I should help my community. And I stopped listening to the people I was serving to hear what they needed and what they wanted. So I had to take a step back. I started noticing that if I sent supplies to the school that I was supporting, within two, three days, somebody would break into the school and steal everything. It was because I was like a foreigner going back into this village, dictating what people should do and not giving them ownership of the project. So again, I had to step back and I worked with my local chief, made him the hero because I was being accused of starting a political party. So when the community heard that I was coming home, people would come and gather at the school. I had large gatherings and in Zimbabwe, it's illegal to have a gathering without a permit from the government. So they started attacking my family. They started threatening people at home that I was starting a political party. And all I was trying to do was help this community. So I went to my local chief and I said to him, you have to front all the meetings. You are the chief. Let's sit down and talk about what we want to do in the community. I will be at the back of the hall. And I gave my chief pride and he started chairing the meetings and then the whole community came on board. It got to a point where if somebody stole anything from the school, there was community policing. Women in the community would catch the thieves, drag them by the neck and bring them back to the school to return the goods. And everything changed from there. So what I learned from my coach is, although I was the hero in my story, it wasn't about me. My story was about reaching people like me, my avatar, activists, people who are about social justice, who want to make a difference for the lives of women and children. I wanted to transfer what's in my heart of what's possible. That if more women get up and stand up and speak and advocate for those who are less privileged than us, we can change this world. I got my second TED opportunity in New York, upstate New York. And I got up on stage and I infused humor, I infused my pain, I uplifted this audience. And I think that second TED talk is probably the best presentation I ever gave. I had props. So I started off with two broomsticks and told a funny little story of how people would come to Zimbabwe and try and educate people on how to use condoms. And they would put the condoms on a broomstick and say, this is how you prevent AIDS. Every single hut in our village had a broomstick with a condom behind the door because people took it so literally. So people laughed at the beginning of my presentation. So a good TED talk needs to have humor. It needs to have emotion. You have to take people on a roller coaster ride of emotions so they can feel who you are and feel what you stand for. A good TED talk needs to be something that you are so passionate about. You breathe it, you live it, you talk about it, and that needs to be demonstrated online. So you need to create what's called a digital platform. 
a digital footprint of who you are. If you go into Google right now and type in Gertrude Mache, you will find hundreds of references about me. If you go into Google Images, you will find thousands of photographs of me. All of this was done very deliberately by my giving my bio and my photograph to organizers of events where I was speaking. I would always change the file name of the photographs I gave from the digital images or digital uh, numbers that your phone will generate and rename it with my name because Google does not see pictures. Google can only find you through words. So if you want somebody to find your photograph, the name of the photo has to be your name. So there is thousands of photos of Gertrude Mache online. So when TED organizers are looking for speakers, they do their research, people. They go online and they try and find you. So every single time you speak, go with a friend, have your phone, give your phone to somebody in the audience, somebody sitting on the front row and say, please record me speaking. Post those videos on Facebook, post them, post them on, on YouTube. Be seen speaking, that's number one. Your photographs, when you apply for a TED event, they want you to send them photos. Don't send one photograph. Send them a drive with multiple pictures, some of you on stage, some of you speaking. Let them pick the photo that goes with the theme of their conference. When you pitch yourself to TED, you have to remember that every conference has a theme. So you have to tailor the theme of your presentation in line with the theme of the conference. So my upstate New York presentation was on the same topic. So I talk about Ubuntu. That's my message to the world. That is my idea worth spreading. But what I do now is I position Ubuntu from different perspectives. The theme in New York was called Think Again. And I emphasized in that presentation three things that people could do to rethink the way they are taking in information and content. And it came across really strong. I've talked about using props. If you're an author, you could hold up your book, but never say explicitly, almost like you're trying to sell your book. That doesn't come off right with Ted. You can say when I published my first book, what happens is people will go online and look for your books because of that TED talk. But don't go on a TED platform and say, I'm an author. I've written a book called X, A, B, and C. It kind of sounds very salesy, like you're trying to sell your book. So be very wary if you're an author, not to use your book as something you're trying to sell on their platform. The way you look is very important for TED. They say that you have 30 seconds to make an impression on people. There is a 30 second rule. It's what comes out of your mouth in the first 30 seconds. And it's how you look in those first 30 seconds. So it's all about how you're going to brand yourself as a speaker. Have you ever really thought about your personal branding? I modeled my personal branding off one of my heroes. Oprah is my hero. I love the way she dresses. I love the way she presents herself. So I took aspects of what Oprah was doing and I infused it into my African culture. And I decided I would show up as being African first. One, because I can't run away from this beautiful chocolate brown skin. <laughs> Doesn't matter where I go in the world, you know that this woman is from somewhere in Africa. So I want you guys to think about Three words that best describe you as a brand. As a speaker, you are no longer you. You are now a Nike. You are a Microsoft. You are an Instagram. You are a Coca-Cola. What do those brands stand for? If I ask you to close your eyes and I said the word Nike, what comes to mind is the tick sign. Nike uses a symbol for their branding. If I ask you to close your eyes and I said Coca-Cola, what comes to mind are three colors, black, red, and white. So you can use colors to infuse into your branding. So symbols, colors. So what I did is 
My three words came from a testimonial that I got from one of my clients. She said, Gertrude is a vibrant bundle of African energy. And I, I just love that testimonial. The three words I pulled out was one, African. I show up as being Afri African first. I didn't want people to mistake me for being maybe African American or Caribbean. I wanted them to see the way that I dress and say, this woman is from Africa. Today, I have one African piece of jewelry on me. My earrings are very Western. I bought this top in India. I'm wearing a Western polo neck, but I have got this beautiful Ndevele jewelry. One thing that you wear can say exactly where you're from. The second thing I got out of the words this woman gave me was the word energy. My presentation style is very energetic. In fact, a lot of times when I speak and they give me an option on you know, what I want to have either the lapel mic or the handheld mic, I always have to ask for a lapel mic or the one they put on your ear because if I'm holding a mic, I use my hands to speak. I can hit somebody with the mic. So <laughs> my speaking style is very energetic. And the energetic part of my brand is also reflected by the fonts that I've used to write my branding material. So just the way you write your name on a book cover, the font you choose, says something about who you are. The way you will write your book titles, the way you put together your marketing material, you have to choose the fonts that go with your personality. So if you're very conservative, you use conservative fonts. If you are creative and out of the box, all of my fonts are out of the box fonts and that reflects who I am as a brand. The last thing I got out of this woman's testimonial was vibrant. She said, Gertrude is a vibrant bundle of African energy. And I just thought that was so delicious. So the vibrancy is in the colors that I wear. If I am wearing black, there is a splash of color on me. So colors for me help me to be energized. Colors uplift me. So if I'm really having a bad day, you will see me wearing yellow. I had a bad night last night. I wasn't feeling very well. And I thought, okay, I need to Zeus myself up, put on my yellow, and I feel absolutely fantastic as I present to you today. So you could mix corporate jackets, very Western looking, very formal, in specific colors and use very strong colors for the branding. And that becomes part of who you are. So those are the first three things you have to think about in terms of branding yourself as an author. Then you have to create what's called brand consistency. And as a speaker, you have to be consistent about what your idea worth spreading is. So you will be seen on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, speaking about the same topic, but from different perspectives. Right now, I'm working on a presentation. I've been invited to speak at the New Zealand Women's Leadership Institute conference on the 18th of this month. And I thought, wow, great opportunity for me to position myself and actually write a book about Ubuntu leadership. There's a lot that can be learned by people in the corporate world on how to infuse Ubuntu into the workplace. So I'm working on a book on Ubuntu leadership. That's going to be my next presentation at this event. So every time you get invited to speak, see how you can incorporate that idea worth spreading. I even managed to infuse Ubuntu into a presentation I did for property investors. Now, what does Ubuntu have to do with property investors? It was a property investors conference, but I realized that I became successful as a property investor by being honest and being authentic. I bought my first house in New Zealand, ironing people's clothes. I remember the second house I bought, I didn't have enough money. And I went in to see the person who owned the house. And I said, I love this home. I've just started a property investing business. I can't afford it right now. W what can we do? H how can we work this out? And this man gave me six months to come up with my deposit. He held off selling his home because he liked me. He just saw this young entrepreneur who was enthusiastic, who had energy, who had come to a new country and had a dream to do something with her life. 
and I managed to get that taken home because the owner of the house held off selling his home because he was just inspired by my crazy little story of how I came to New Zealand with a suitcase, three kids, $500, and a dream. So Ubuntu can be woven into so many facets of life. And that's what I'm doing. I'm now writing a full book on Ubuntu. And what happened is when I got on TED, people in university started finding me. I got my first break in an academic institution by being invited to be a Rooney International Scholar. Do you know that your personal story can be sold in universities? I was found by a very rich billionaire. Her name is Mrs. Rooney. Her husband owns the football team called the Steelers in Pittsburgh, USA. Mrs. Rooney was a professor at a university called Robert Morris University. And when she retired, she decided to give the university with a house. She would pay the salary for scholars, international scholars, to come and bring the world to these rich American students. I had a fully furnished five bedroomed house. They gave me a car. It was a six month contract where I was paid $10,000 a month to lecture for two hours a week. It was the most amazing opportunity I ever got. I actually wrote my second book while I was there. So I realized that my little personal story could be used in the academic world. When I got to this university, I was supposed to lecture in the education department. I was going to work with educators and infuse all of the things that I knew. When people started hearing about my life experience, the head of the English department invited me to come and speak. She was doing a lecture on oral uh, history, uh, sorry, um, storytelling. And because storytelling is a part of my life, I was jumped in there, started lecturing in the English department. The history department invited me to speak on oral history. Everything I know was passed down to me through the stories that my grandmother and my family used to tell me. I don't have anything written about all of the knowledge that I know. So I did lectures in oral history. The IT department realized that I was a first generation coder. I used to program computers in basic, COBOL, Pascal. I'm a first generation coder. I'm a dinosaur. There's not many people like me out there. And I got to lecture in the IT department. In the business department, I got to lecture in international business and talk about how I created these global businesses. It was just so fascinating to see how my life story could be repurposed by an academic institution in so many faculties. And you can do the same thing with your story. Right now, a lot of universities are looking for speakers, people who can come and present, guest lecturers, I did a presentation for a university in Slovakia two weeks ago. I was online with 100 students, did a presentation about Ubuntu, and it still blows me away at how people are finding me. But they are finding me because I got on TED. So if you learn to speak, don't be taken over by speaking from your head. You can go to Toastmasters and go for coaching and get technically perfect in how to communicate. What gets through to people is when you speak from the heart. So I have an invitation to all of you. I have launched a new program called Speaking from the Heart and Landing Your First TED Talk. If you are interested, inbox me, find me online. My email is getrudmache at gmail.com. Take this opportunity to have a global reach by being a TED speaker. It will change your life. Thank you.